Meet little Al. Al, say hello. Hello. Little Al is supposed to be traveling to Italy to visit his mother, but it doesn't look like he's going anywhere. Maybe he doesn't realize his train has left the station already. Click the curtains to shed some light. Well, look at that. Al is traveling to Italy. Only now that he sees the landscape sailing past the window, does he know he is moving relative to the ground. Try changing your perspective to see how Al is moving. From the ground's perspective, Al is moving and the ground is not. From Al's perspective, the ground is moving and he is not. From the sun's perspective, Al, the train, and the ground are all moving in orbit. As long as Al's train moves along a smooth track at constant speed in a straight line, Al can't feel it moving. Even his ball is bouncing straight up and down. Bouncing my ball helps me think. Even when you feel like you're motionless, you are moving relative to something else. Right now, as you stay very still to watch this story, the Earth is flying through space, you along with it. Al likes that he can't tell he's moving unless it's relative to something else. He wonders if there are other things he can't feel happening. I bounce my ball once per second. It helps me think. Would he notice if time slowed down? Still one bounce per second. Still one bounce per second. Still one bounce per second. I like to pace for five steps. It helps me think. Would he notice if space became very squished? It's still five steps across. No matter what is going on around him, Al always feels like everything is normal. From his perspective, he is standing perfectly still while the universe moves around him. Mama! Al arrives in Italy and is met at the station by his mother. He promptly starts bouncing his ball again. My little Al, always studying physics. Al enjoys studying the physics of his ball bouncing up and down, but wonders what other physics there is. Al finds a law of physics that says light waves move through space at a speed called C, almost 300,000 kilometers per second. Al has an idea. For him to always feel like everything's normal, he must always see light travel through space at 300,000 kilometers per second, just like his ball always bounces straight up and down. So just how fast is that? 300,000 kilometers per second. 
That's a distance equivalent to 23 and a half times the diameter of Earth in a single second. Even if the light, or photon, has a running start, it still travels 300,000 kilometers per second. Light so reliable that Al imagines a perfect clock that uses a bouncing photon to count seconds. The clock's photon takes exactly one second to bounce between mirrors placed 150,000 kilometers apart. Each time the photon hits the top mirror, the clock ticks. Once Al starts to imagine, he doesn't stop. He imagines that deep in space there is a gift shop anchored to the earth by a taut rope. It is so far away that it would take 10 years for light to get there. So Al calls the distance 10 light years. Al's imagination also builds him a super fast spaceship so he can travel to the gift shop to buy a present for his mother. To keep track of time during his trip, Al brings along his perfect clock. Al takes off at 80% the speed of light. His perfect clock keeps track of the time and Al bounces his ball in sync with it. Al's mom watches him using super powerful binoculars. She notices that the photon in Al's clock travels more than 300,000 kilometers between ticks because the ship is moving as the photon bounces back and forth. Since light can't speed up, it must be taking extra time to cover the greater distance. Intrigued, Al's mom compares her clock to Al's and sees that indeed Al's clock is ticking slowly. From Al's perspective, he feels like he's standing still, so the light bounces straight up and down just like his ball, one bounce per second. Al's mom zooms in to watch Al. She sees that not only is Al's clock ticking slowly, but Al is moving slowly as well and thinking slowly. Al's time has slowed down compared to her own. From Al's perspective, he feels like he's standing still, so the light bounces straight up and down. Al wonders what would happen if his ship accelerated to the speed of light. He imagines it happening and realizes that from his mom's perspective, the photon would be doing all it can just to keep up with his ship. So Al's clock would never tick, and his time would stop. Al takes this as a clue that you could never actually reach the speed of light. Al settles for 99.5% the speed of light and sets off following the rope that anchors the gift shop to the earth. The rope is the only indication that he's actually moving. Without it, all Al would have are the distant stars and the feeling of being perfectly still. Not very exciting space travel at all. <laughs> Hold on, there's something up ahead. Maybe this will spice things up. Al sees that a three million kilometer section of the rope is blue and patrolled by a space bobby whose job is to ticket anyone breaking the universal speed limit, the speed of light. The cop is just as bored as Al. He's never given out a speeding ticket yet. From Al's perspective, he is standing still. 
and feeling kind of hungry, while the space cop is flying by at 99.5% the speed of light and eating a donut. Al zooms in and notices that he looks unusually thin for a donut-eating space cop. He gets an idea to measure the length of blue rope by timing how long it takes for it to pass him. Hmm, Al times one second. Since the space cop and blue rope are moving at about 300,000 kilometers per second, Al calculates the length of blue rope is 300,000 kilometers. Then why does the cop sign say that it's 3 million kilometers? Curious? Well, what does the space cop see? The cop zooms in on Al's clock and sees it going 10 times slower than his own. The cop counts 10 seconds while Al passes the blue rope, calculating a distance of 3 million kilometers. But because Al's clock is ticking slow, Al only times 1 second. So that's why the distance appears 10 times shorter. From Al's perspective, he is still, and the cop is moving. So the cop is squished, and Al is not. From the cop's perspective, he is still, and Al is moving. So Al is squished, and the cop is not. From Al's perspective, not only is the cop squished, but the earth, the rope, and the gift shop are all squished, because they're all anchored together and moving at 99.5% the speed of light relative to him. This means that to Al, the distance from the earth to the gift shop is ten times shorter. What a pleasant surprise. It's only going to take him one year to get there instead of ten. About a year later, Al reaches the gift shop and buys his mom a miniature model of his very own ship. He sets off for Earth again, traveling 99.5% the speed of light. With his ever-questioning mind, Al wonders what speed the mini-ship will travel towards Earth if he launches it at 99.5% the speed of light from his own ship, which is already traveling 99.5% the speed of light. From Al's perspective, the mini-ship flies away at 99.5% the speed of light, so in one second it is almost 300,000 kilometers away. But from the perspective of the space cop, Al's 300,000 kilometer ruler is squished, and Al's clock is slow. So what Al measured as almost 300,000 kilometers in one second is, from the cop's perspective, a lot less than 300,000 kilometers in much more time than one second. The result is while the mini ship's total speed is closer to the speed of light, it doesn't quite reach it. As he travels, Al muses. It takes hard work to get his ship moving, and as Al noticed with his mini rocket experiment, the closer he travels to the speed of light, the harder it is to gain speed relative to the cop. That's why it's impossible to reach the speed of light, and extremely difficult to even get close. Light can travel at the speed of light because it has no mass. Things without mass can not only reach the speed of light, they can never go at any other speed. A little more than two years after Al set out on his adventure, Al reaches Earth again. His mom has missed him terribly. From her perspective, the gift shop stayed ten light years away from Earth, so Al's journey took over twenty years. While Al is only two years older, his mom has aged twenty years.
Al decides that his theory of relativity is very real. When you move relative to someone else, your space and time change relative to them. But as sure as Al's ball will always bounce straight up and down, the speed of light will always be the same.